Now, now let us see a lecture on VA characteristics of MOSFET. So if you see this one over here, there are two diagrams where the first one talks about uh, the diagram about a MOSFET, which is in fact it's an uh, N MOSFET where it is a uh, the N type of MOS transistor has been built upon a P type of substrate and upon this P type of substrate if uh, after undergoing some large number of uh, uh, processes then uh, source and drain and again gate terminals are being formed along with the SiO2. So this is how an N MOS uh, looks like. Now here the voltage between these two this is a source terminal this is a gate and a drain terminal voltage between these two is VGS and here this is a voltage which is connected over here it is a VDS and we all know that MOSFET is a four terminal device where uh, we, we can see the three terminals over here source gate and drain and then the last one is a bulk terminal bulk terminal so now here in this uh, in order to understand the working condition of a MOSFET, it is very important to know the VA characteristics of MOSFET. The VA characteristics of MOSFET tells about how a particular transistor will be working. What, what are the uh, main areas of working uh, conditions for a yeah, MOS trans, uh, transistor? Usually for a, a transistor, there are three different uh, modes of working conditions. That is, first one is a cutoff phase, second one is a linear phase and the third one is a saturation phase. Cutoff phase. Cutoff phase is nothing else but it is a uh, cutoff region is a region where there will not be any kind of channel between the two terminals uh, that is a uh, source and uh, drain. If there is no channel definitely then there is no concept of a, a motion of uh, electrons or charged particles between the source and drain. Whenever the electrons are not going from one terminal to another terminal we cannot expect any kind of current produced in that particular region. So we call it as a cutoff region that is nothing else but the current in that particular region or in that particular area it is equal to 0 volts. And cutoff region is a region where a, uh, your transistor can be used as a uh, open circuit open circuit and it's, it has been uh, uh, usually used whenever we require this particular transistor as an electronic switches. We can use this transistor as an electron, electronic switch in a cutoff region. Then the next one is you can see here in this characteristics where I have drawn a graph regarding IT that is a uh, current uh, drain current and also uh, this one is a drain voltage drain to voltage so now here <coughs> in this particular graph you can see that whenever the this particular uh, there is no current no current almost the current is equal to zero this current equal to zero happens when in this particular condition when the VGS is less than VT what is VT over here VT is a threshold uh, uh, voltage. What is threshold voltage? The threshold voltage is a voltage where the region below the SiO2, that is below the oxide layer, uh, forms an inversion layer. Inversion layer or else it is a region or it is a voltage whenever the transistor turns on. So we can call it as a threshold voltage. So for this condition, you, you the cutoff uh, region will be acting that is a 0 volts. So this entire thing is a uh, cutoff region but once it uh, this one, whenever the VGS is greater than VT, then we can see this characteristics of it, how, how this particular current drain current is varying with respect to increase in the, in the voltage at the drain. <coughs> you can see over here now, uh, as the voltage at this part, uh, this voltage is increased exponentially or gradually the, volt, the current also increases. The current also increases, you can see here that in this three uh, uh, curves which it talks about the VGS1 that is 1 volt, VGS2 is a 2 volts and VGS3 is a 3 volts. So now whenever the voltage is increased you can see that even this current is also increasing. You can uh, you can also see that this, this particular part of a graph or a characteristics tells that there is a linear increase in a current with respect to the increase in the voltage. So therefore we call this region as an this particular region as a linear region. Why do we call it as a linear region? Because there is a linear increase in the current, a drain, a current at the drain with respect to the increase in the uh, voltage. That is a VDS. So again, once, <coughs> once the uh, voltage over here 
this VDS is equal to VGS minus VT. Whenever this voltage VDS is equal to VGS minus VT, there is this point, at this particular point, you can see that the bending of the curve takes place. The bending of the curve takes place, it means that gradually the current is going to stabilize, so the current is going to saturate. So now, therefore, the, the saturation stage starts over here and it goes on. Uh, at one particular point, the current there, it becomes as a zero current. So now here, that because the current is going to get saturated, we call this region as an saturated region or saturation region. It doesn't mean that the current is going to be uh, completely constant. Uh, uh, let me take an example that if you VDS is equal to 2 volts, if VDS is equal to 2 volts, uh, let me consider that your ID is equal to 1 milliampere. 1 milliampere. And, and for the second instance, if we consider if VDS is equal to 4 volts, your ID is going to be almost the same, that's 1.1 milliampere. What's actually happening? Uh, my uh, my aim of uh, telling is the, this particular uh, example is that it is not going to stay constant all the time even though the VDS is increased. It means if VDS is increasing it is not going to affect. It doesn't mean that one but there will be very small increase in this particular current that's only 0.1 or 0.05 that uh, uh, a, a increase in current takes place over here. So this is how this um, uh, explanation of this particular characteristics of uh, MOSFET goes on. Now, let us try to um, uh, derive this particular uh, MOSFET uh, uh, VI characteristics. First, before deriving, let me consider there is a channel over here, channel has been formed. If a channel is formed, definitely the charge particles will be moving over here. Whenever a charge particle is moving, you can see and now this gauge is nothing else but it is a metal, uh, metal layer. Uh, metal conductive layer and again this there is a uh, conduction layer below the SiO2 oxide layer. So now this particular region acts as a capacitor. What is a capacitor? Capacitor is a uh, kind of structure where there will be two uh, parallel uh, conducting plates. Between the two parallel conducting plates there will be an insulator. So now here this particular region is acting as an air capacitor, MOS capacitor. So now this is a uh, positive, if I give a positive uh, voltage over here this will be then uh, this is a conducting layer, again this is again conducting layer, between we are having a SI water which, which is an insulator. So for that one, uh, the current which is flowing over here, this current is flowing over here, it is nothing else but it is a function of the charge carriers. It is, uh, it is like uh, the amount of current which is flowing between these two uh, regions, the source and drain, it is nothing else but it is a uh, it is a function of uh, charge carriers which are flowing between these two regions. So we know that formula that I equal to BQ by DT that is a rate of change of uh, charge uh, carriers that is delta Q by delta P. Now <clears throat> the total amount of charge, the total amount of charge which is uh, concentrated between these two uh, terminals uh, that is in the channel is nothing else but it is a product of capacitance that is C times of the voltage. So it is equal to C times of voltage. Now coming to the what is C, C is a capacitance. So now here if I consider one capacitor in this way, if these are the two plates of capacitor, this is my uh, uh, T or the distance. Then uh, capacitance formula we have stated from the basics of physics that is uh, a, a over D times permittivity of that particular um, uh, uh, material. That is nothing else but here our material is the oxide. So it becomes as C equal to A over D. D is the distance between the two plates. A is the area of this particular plates and E is the permittivity of this oxide. So now our formula becomes as Q equal to A E ox D into V. What is this D? D is the thickness of this particular oxide. So we can write it as and what is area? A area is the width into length of this particular oxide. So we can write it as E ox over T ox into W into L, W into L. So now this becomes what is this voltage? The voltage is nothing else but the voltage which is given over here that is nothing else but it is Vgs minus Vt. Vgs minus Vt. 
so now this is my uh, uh, we have found out the formula for the charge between these two uh, terminals that is in the in the uh, channel now we are supposed to find out the time time how to find out the time we know we, we can calculate the time that amount of charge carriers have been moved between these two regions uh, with the help of a formula of velocity of this uh, uh, charge carrier carriers from the basics of the physics we know that what is velocity velocity is nothing else but displacement over time then from that on we can find it out time is nothing else but uh, time is equal to displacement over uh, velocity what's our displacement displacement is nothing else but this is the length of the channel so now here our time is equal to displacement length of the channel into velocity that is equal to l over L over velocity. Uh, what is velocity? Velocity is a, it is a uh, mu n types of electric field. That is a uh, mobility of the charge ca carriers a, a into uh, product of the electric field which is produced over here. Then it becomes a uh, mu n types of uh, e mu n types of e, and this is a equal to this can also be written as a L over mu n into V d s over L. Vds over L. I'll tell you how, how I wrote this one. What is a, uh, we, we have stated in the basis of physics that potential is equal to E into D. Therefore, E equal to potential over D. I have, uh, I have, <coughs> I have applied this particular formula over here. Therefore, now your uh, time is equal to L square over mu N into VDS. So this is our second uh, formula. Uh, we have for, for framed the formula for the uh, charge and also for the uh, time. Now we will we'll try to substitute this formula uh, formula in the current and we will try to find out the amount of current which has been uh, produced at the drain uh, due to this all this uh, potentials and moment of charge uh, particles. Okay, now we will uh, try to substitute the equation 1 and 2 in the equation I d equal to q over t, let it be my equation number a. And if I substitute over here, then I d is equal to E ox by T ox into W into L Vgs minus Vt, Vgs minus Vt over L square over mu times of Vds. If I try to simplify this one, then I'll be coming across. It's a mu n by because we are dealing about uh, uh, electrons over here, mu n times of E ox by T ox W by L W by L Vgs minus Vt into Vds. So this is my equation number B, which is nothing else but this is an equation of a drain current in the linear region. This is how we are supposed to find it out, equation of drain current in the linear region. And this particular equation can also be written in terms of conductance, that is nothing else but in terms of GM. If I consider this part as a conductance part, which is regarding the mobility of the charged particles, then I can write it as ID equal to G times of m into vds let it be my equation number c uh, kindly please uh, do, uh, ignore the parts where i am writing it as small g and capital uh, g sometimes just uh, on the continuity basis i am just uh, written this uh, small g and small d over here it is actually capital g and capital d so this is how we have framed out the equation for the um, drain current in the uh, uh, linear region Okay, now uh, we'll try to see uh, the uh, drain current in the saturation region. For the saturation region, let us assume that this voltage VDS is increased. If the voltage VDS is increased, then definitely uh, let me consider that at one particular point of time, let the VDS at this point is equal to zero and VDS over equal to VDS. And if I need to take uh, the VDS at the mid midpoint of this channel, that is a, 
uh, say at some point of x, it will be equal to half of that one. That's the average of that VDS equal to half times of the VDS. So now my equation Q, that is a charge uh, uh, across this particular uh, channel is can be written as C times of V. And we have already written this one, uh, Q equal to C we have derived already ex over p into w into l and uh, now this becomes as vgs minus vt minus half of the that particular value that is a vds vds now uh, i have told that the saturation region will be starting at vds equal to vgs minus vt what is this vds equal to vgs minus uh, vt Whenever you go on increasing this particular VDS at one particular point of time, the, uh, as per the differential equation, what happens is that this particular channel goes on decreasing and then one particular point it becomes as a pinch off. Then this, your channel looks like this. Completely it looks like a triangle. This, this is called as a pinch off point. And we call, we can even call this one as a, this particular curve as a locus of the pinch, pinch off point. Locus of pinch of point. So now here, uh, that is a pinch of point, that's nothing else but you're completely, uh, your uh, drain uh, current is going to become zero, uh, zero at one particular uh, point of time at this pinch of mix, ultimately it becomes zero. So now here, uh, uh, if I uh, try to substitute the values over here, then VDS equal to pinch of happens at VDS equal to VGS minus VT and we know that P, that's the time, T we have just now we have uh, derived L square by mu n times of uh, VDS. Then uh, if I go on substituting the value of IT, if I substitute the value of IT, uh, then I'll be coming across a, a term called mu n E ox over T ox T ox uh, W by L. If I substitute in this particular equation, that's A. Uh, then it becomes as uh, VGS minus uh, VT half times of what is VDS? VDS equal to VGS minus VT, VGS minus VT, VGS minus uh, VT. So now uh, this particular equation can also be written as uh, this thing, uh, this entire thing will be, uh, can be termed as VGS minus VT by 2 into this VD, uh, where is this VD? VDS. VDS. So now uh, this is uh, how we have come up upon up, up to this particular point. Now we'll see the final step of this one. I'm writing this particular equation, final equation of saturation region. That is ID equal to mu n times E ox over P ox W over L. Then this becomes as if I substitute even in the VDS, that is VDS equal to VGS minus VT, we come across an equation called So this is my drain current in the saturation region. This is my drain current in the saturation region and the previous was the drain current in the linear uh, region. <clears throat> so now we have seen that in the starting that in the cutoff region, your transistor can be used uh, as an electronic switch. If you are using your transistor in a linear region, your transistor can be used as an amplifier. Why? Because as a drain voltage that the VDS has been increased and ID is also increasing, then it, it can be used as an amplifier. And apart from that one, you can use this one saturation region for the switching purposes, for the electronic switching. Whenever you need the switching characteristics or switching operations, we can use this uh, saturation region uh, uh, equations. So this is how we will be deriving the VA characteristics of a MOSFET. I hope you have understood this particular concept of MOSFET and its derivation of the VA characteristics. Thank you everyone.